So um, first of all, I put pretty much anything I'm gonna talk about on our wiki. So in this page, which is called Open Access License. Um, right, and we are gonna look just a licensing data set or code um, by giving open access. We're not looking at anything else. So sometimes people ask, why would you need a license actually um, if you, I'm gonna give basically free access to your data or to your code to anyone. And, and the reason is that um, a license really um, regulates how you can do that. So you can apply um, some condition to the way that people can use. And the really common one is, for example, you can ask people to attribute the work to you. Um, so it's a lot clearer, not only it's better for you because you might actually um, have a, still retain a minimum of control on your work, but it's also a lot easier from a user point of view um, to, to use a data set or a piece of code which come with um, a clear set of rules. So they don't have to actually contact you and ask you, you know, hello, can I do this? Can I redistribute your data or do any other thing? So it, in that sense, um, and this is why in a way we don't worry too much about the legal frame, why license are actually some piece of legal code and the one we're gonna use a bit uh, written down by actual lawyer to be adaptable. Um, I don't expect, and I don't think you should expect um, one of these license to hold in a tribunal. And it shouldn't be a concern. It, it really is to clarify uh, what you can do and not do um, with the data. So we're going to look at commonly used license. Um, the ARDC, which is the Australian uh, Research Data Commons, sorry, I just said the course, Research Data Commons, as a comprehensive guide, guide, which is listed over here. Well, I mean, there is a link here. Uh, this is an actual file which covers um, more even the legal aspect, including copyright. I actually did put as well at the bottom of this page, a uh, link to intellectual property and copyright uh, definition for each one of the institution that um, form CLEX. And so in case, you know, you had doubt, um, from today's point of view, all we need to understand is that any intellectual work is basically um, comes with intellectual property like the property or the idea and it's kind of and that's where it starts to be a little bit marky but um, um, pretty much it should be the author and the creator should have this intellectual property in reality when you're working um, for an employer and he has contributed um, by giving you funding and all sorts of things um, for to do your work, um, the institution usually end up being the owner or the intellectual property of your work. And you normally, when you sign up a contract, and even if you're a student and you sign up a contract for a scholarship, you actually also sign up your intellectual property to your institution. Um, you still get obviously recognition and I think should, should a patent follow your work, you have a right to have, you know, also some financial gain from your work. But it really depends on what you've been signing and what the rules are at your institution. Okay, so um, CLEX is not uh, a legal entity. So in theory, we can apply um, license or at least we don't own the intellectual property, but we tend to uh, act on behalf or your own institution or yourself. So I guess if you were applying, um, in a way, if you're applying a license and you're choosing this license and you're not talking with your institution, they don't really want to hear from you any little data set or paper you, you do. Um, but just make sure that you're in line 
with a requirement. Now, that shouldn't be a problem because normally if you apply an open access license, because that's normally uh, um, what they require themselves from the ARC or, you know, from their other funder. And normally that's what they want you to do. As I say, unless you have sensitive data, which I never really come across uh, from anyone in our field yet. Right, so what are the uh, license, which um, they pretty much, as we say, a collection of rules that would apply to your data. And I'm just gonna go a little bit uh, quickly for this. The, um, this is just some of the rules that can be uh, used in a license, the most common ones, I guess. Uh, so we got attribution, which just simply means that a user is required to cite or acknowledge you when they're using your data. It usually is including any license. And so it's quite important actually, and, and better for you if you always attach a citation as well. So they know how you want them to acknowledge you. Um, then other common clauses, commercial use, or research use, commercial use um, pretty much um, means that you allow for your data to be used for commercial reason or not allowed and research use often is used to say, you know, only research use is um, allowed. Um, private use is pretty much, at least in the creative common, it means just that the person can use the data. <laughs> um, it's pretty much again, um, available everywhere, but you're not always allowed to distribute the data. Um, and uh, when you're allowed to distribute the data, what could happen is that you might have to attach um, the original license and copyright noise, copyright notice, or um, to, um, yes, um, when you distribute the data, sorry. Um, then there is something else covering a possible modification of the data or the code. Uh, so again, this uh, doesn't mean that you can, if you're just using it um, for your own self, you can do whatever you want with the data and with the code, you can modify it. But if you start distribu distributing a modification of the product, you're not always able to do that. Um, the same license cover uh, in case you are allowed to modify the project, but the owner, um, sorry, the data, but the owner of the data wants you to then share and distribute the, the, the right product under the same condition that they share theirs. So in, in a way, this means that like if I put out a data set and I want everybody to have free access to these with, you know, with a few conditions or whatever, in this way, I, I can control that someone who augment this data set, for example, uh, can restrict access to others um, unless they don't actually um, put it out in public. And finally, there is the not derivatives, uh, which means um, that um, if a user modifies a main to transform the data in any way, they cannot redistribute it. So it, it, it's a bit like what we say before on the negative. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean that a person doesn't really want you to, this in case you're actually on the user side, <laughs> Uh, doesn't really want you to publish any derivative. It often means that they want you to contact them before you do so. So in, in fact, if you want to have this clause for that reason, it's also good if you maybe add something also on the readme file or somewhere else which says, you know, um, no derivatives are allowed, but, uh, you know, if you want to, um, publish a modification of this data set, please contact me. Okay, so this is mostly um, what's covering data set license and um, we'll see then um, an example of data set license, the one we normally uh, advise people to use, which is the Creative Commons. And we we'll look at the video since you did them before, uh, which will explain a little bit better than me um, all these concepts. 
And finally, I put a couple of rules which normally applies only to software, and one is the disclose the source. So a source code must be made available uh, when you distribute um, a, a modification of this code, or state changes, which means that any changes must be clearly documented in your code, any changes with respect to the original source. Okay, and finally, licenses contain a disclaimer. Uh, they usually cover warranty and liability, so they don't um, take any responsibility if you get any damage by using the data or, you know, and you want to make that clear. <laughs> and, uh, and also it means, the warranty means that the software or the data is provided as it is. And, you know, you don't really, um, uh, if someone finds even a mistake and you don't have time to fix it, you don't have to because, you know, you didn't provide any warranty or something or service going with the data. Okay, so um, there's a lot of different flavors. And um, so as I say, for the data set license, we use the Creative Commons. We use the Creative Commons because this is basically an organization with who did a lot of work in trying to make the license really human readable and easy to use and to choose. Um, so I put here um, a, a few link. They have an international version. This is the one we normally use because um, you know your data might be of interest also internationally. But if you want, there's also an Australian Creative Commons, which I linked here. They have an online tool which in real training fashion wasn't working um, <laughs> uh, five minutes ago, um, which help you choosing which license, which kind of different combination of the rules might suit you. So just guide you through a process. We can actually try to see if it's working. Yay, it is working. Okay, so you can see here, um, they pretty much um, ask you a series of questions. So do you want to allow adaptation of your work to be shared? If you say, you can say yes, no, or yes, as long as others share in the same way or no. And then depending on, say that I choose no, as you can see the selected license is changing. Right, so one good thing of them is that they have all these little symbols, which then it's kind of, we don't really attach to our own work, but you, if you notice, like if you go on the internet, look for images, sometimes you do find them attached to images and stuff. So um, they really give you a straight on idea once you're used to that kind of, um, you know, you work out what the code means. <laughs> um, Right, so I'll just leave you to the video. So I rest a little bit. I apologize, I'm not really well today. Yeah, digital content legally. Can you hear? How do you let people know that you want them to reuse your own work? Sorry, I'm just going to interrupt. Can you hear that? Yes, cool. Yeah, it's coming through. Yeah, we can hear it. Have you ever wondered how to download and share digital content legally? How do you let people know that you want them to reuse your own work? Creative Commons licenses can help you do both. We'll show you how. Our world's exploded with digital opportunities. Now we can communicate, share and work together using the exceptional distribution network that is the internet. Information and content can fly between us in exciting new ways. But it's important to know that when something is created, say a photo, a document, or a music track, it's automatically protected by copyright. Copyright enables people to say who can share and reuse their creations. You must always obtain someone's permission before sharing or reusing their work, even when it's posted online. But what if a creator wants everyone to use their work without the hassle of granting permission over and over? This is where Creative Commons can help. Creative Commons provides licensing tools that are free to use. You can apply a license to your work, which refines your copyright and streamlines how you give permission. Zach here downloads a photo called CC Kiwi that he wants to use in his science project. He can do this without asking Kerry, the photographer first, because she's already given permission with a Creative Commons license. 
Curry's license is legally robust, but easy for Zach to understand. She has told the world, including Zach, that they can use CC Kiwi as long as they acknowledge her as the original photographer. There are more rules Curry could have included. Creative Commons licenses are made up of license elements. You can think of them as rules, and each have their own special symbol. This is attribution. It means that Zach must acknowledge Curry when he publishes his science project containing her photo. This is non-commercial. It means no one else but Curry is permitted to make money from CC Kiwi. Tim wants to print the photo onto t-shirts and distribute them to friends. He can do this, but he must not sell them. This is no derivatives, and it means that Curry hasn't given permission to change her photo. Kate can use CC Kiwi on her design blog, but will need to ask Curry before retouching or mixing up the image. And this is share alike. It means new creations that use CC Kiwi need to carry the same license. Jack incorporates his own remix of CC Kiwi in his video installation, but he must share the work under the same terms that Curry has. Each Creative Commons license gives permission to share and includes the attribution rule. So people who find your Creative Commons licensed work are automatically allowed to share it, but are required to acknowledge you if they do. The other three license elements are optional, and you can choose which ones to add, if any. Here are the six combinations that make up Creative Commons licenses. The difference between them is how many rules apply when someone wishes to use your work. The attribution license allows reusers the most freedom, and the attribution non-commercial no derivatives license allows the least freedom. The attribution license and the attribution share alike licenses are sometimes referred to as free cultural works approved licenses. These three licenses restrict commercial use of a work. And these two licenses do not give permission for adapting or remixing. These two licenses require new works to be licensed under the same terms. To choose and apply one of these licenses, and to view their terms in more detail, visit us at creativecommons.org.nz. Or you can answer some questions to help you decide which license best suits your needs at creativecommons.org slash choose. There are some good ways to find other people's Creative Commons licensed work online. You can use a search filter by going to the Creative Commons website. Or why not try the Jamendo website for music, Flickr for images, or Digital NZ for New Zealand content. Using Creative Commons licenses could help your creations reach more people. Maybe you want to connect with others across the globe and take turns at improving a report. Or maybe you just want to have fun remixing someone else's work. Whatever reason you have to share your work, You'll find there are scientists, educators, companies, and public agencies who are using Creative Commons. By opening up permission, just imagine how much we can achieve. Collaborating on what we hold in common, being open about big decisions, and finding solutions in the spaces between us. Let's work together, confidently and legally. It's good to share with Creative Commons. Right. Um, has anyone got any question at this stage? Um, I've got a question, Hal. Yep. Uh, how does the non-commercial constraints apply to like research grants and stuff? Can you use non-commercial stuff for research work? Um, sorry, can you repeat the second part? How does the effect uh, so, so the non-commercial clause doesn't yep. allow you to make money from the from the work yep. does that include things like research grants um, no I mean it's kind of different because the research grant um, you know it's kind of like it wouldn't be necessarily the particular data set code that you do that will um, give you the research grant money it's more like the fact that you did that in a way right it's just like 
Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't use whatever you've done. It just means that you, can, you can't sell it. And also it's like, um, it just means that if someone uses your data, they can't make money out of it. Or if they want to use it for a commercial use, they just said to contact you. It doesn't stop you doing anything. Um, it just stops the public at large. And also the fact like the same concept of the not derivatives, like it's the same thing. Someone can call you um, because I don't know if that was clear. This is just a license. Um, actually, maybe it was in a different video. I, I check a few. Um, so this is just a license, which is your generic license for your product, right? Then if you actually want to grant commercial use to someone, what you did is that you, you, grant a different kind of license to them. Okay, does that answer? Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so this is just for the overall public. This is just saying, okay, I'm putting out my data there and I wanna have, you know, um, um, that's the first kind of um, um, view that people will have your data, but they can always contact you and, um, sign with you a different kind of agreement. Um, it's kind of really different and that's why I'm saying, you know, if you, if the work you're doing or, you, or you're or going to do um, will have definitely a commercial use, that's when you should really go and talk to the research office and to the legal team um, because, um, yeah, unless you want to use your own data to then produce something else and then commercialize that thing, that service or whatever, um, based on that, um, um, obviously it would be really hard to sell your data when it's already freely available around, um, so to speak. Any other question? Right, so if you, don't know which license to use. Normally for the data, we advise using the international, pretty common attribution, non-commercial, share-alike um, license. Um, I had to say, uh, I mean, I, I think pretty much Andy Pittman kind of pointed that one, and most people use either this or the even more restrictive variant we um, not derivatives. Um, but as I say, you know, it's um, once you put your work out uh, and you publish your data, then if someone's really want to use it, they normally contact you. This is really about uh, giving people uh, a clear way um, to, you know, just clear rules around your data. And, and it's always really important as well to give them a good way to cite you, it's also really important to give um, um, contact, you know, and description of the data in a way, you know, to get in touch with you. Um, so you can always discuss different options. Um, okay, so if no one else got questions about this, uh, we'll go on on the software licenses um, for, Software license, we don't use the Creative Commons. The reason is that it, um, there's a partially an historical reason and is that um, the open source organization had already put out and you know, and different um, open software movement had already put out their own licenses, which were fit for the purpose. Uh, so there wasn't a whole like for um, other creative work. And, and also because the Creative Commons license don't have uh, that kind of rules, which we look at the bottom, disclose source and state changes and similar stuff, which are really important uh, when you put out code. And particularly in a way, code is really kind of different when you look at open source code, because is is in the majority of cases, um, it's a collaborative effort. Um, so they needed, um, to have a different kind of license. That's all. So we are um, referring you to the Open Source Organization Initiative and the Software Sustainability Institute, which are for both uh, really good pages. If you're interested in going deeper into um, these, they offer a human readable introduction and also um, 
the Software Sustainability Institute is, um, has lots of links to other websites which cover all sorts of available licenses and useful comparison tools. To give you an idea, um, I think I yeah, open up here. This is the one from GitHub. So you can see a few licenses. You might have heard about them. And, and as you can see here, there is a little summary. And also here, they listed the rules. They list them in kind of permission. So we can see here commercial use. If you over, you can see the definition. Distribution, modification, um, private use, which we all saw. And then there is patent use, um, which is um, um, normally not covering the data, but it, it's more likely um, to appear in the software. And um, patent use pretty much means that um, even if one or the person who collaborate to this open software had attached some sort of patent in, uh, on their little bit of code, uh, you can still use um, the code or distribute it or whatever uh, without having to pay any royalties. So I think this, for example, um, from what I read was a clause which was added be, um, right to, because often the, um, the software is a product of lots of different people and they might have different idea. And uh, finally, there are conditions. As we saw here, for example, there is disclosed source, which is um, the source code must be made available and uh, license and copyright notice. This means that the license and the copyright notice needs to be included in the software. So how often this happens is that you do have a, a license.txt file, say on your GitHub record, but also um, in some cases, and this is what happened, for example, with the Apache, uh, you actually need to put the text of the license in each code file. Um, this is another interesting one. Nectar uses distributions, which means that um, if users are interacting um, with, the, with a piece of code uh, um, on, on a website that you're managing, um, they had the right to receive a copy of the source code as well. Um, which is, I thought that was interesting because often you might be using calculation tools on a website and you don't necessarily know how the calculation happens. And I suppose that's a way to avoid that. And then finally, again, the same license, which was a bit like share alike and state changes, which is a, um, the changes made to the code must be well documented. And as is where we start also seeing clearly labeled the limitation, liability and warranty, which we discussed before. And I think there was another one, which is trademark use in this one. Um, so this pretty much cover everything. The one we suggest for people to use is the Apache license 2.0. Um, by the way, if you click here, um, okay. You should be able to see the whole actual uh, version and the actual, as you can see, or maybe you can't see, that's an actual uh, legal um, document. If you want something in between these two, I think I did, uh, right. Um, I put a link here to an article which actually explain uh, in a bit more length all the various bits and pieces of this license. Okay, so I think we cover most of the rules. Has anyone um, got any questions? Uh, I have one question, Paola. What happens if someone is in breach of your license? Like they don't stick to the conditions? Is there really any opportunity to sort of um, reprimand people or whatever? I, I, I mean, it's probably an unlikely situation for, for us, but I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in theory, these are legal warning, right? So you could take them to tribunal. <laughs> 
um, provided that you applied it really correctly. And that's where I say it gets maybe a little bit marky in terms of the copyright and thing, or you might not be you, but it might have to be your institution. Um, right, um, in reality, I suppose what you will do, like you say, it's in, as a first step to reprimand them. And, and if you think that the breach is actually quite kind of a big one, like someone completely stealing your data and claiming, you know, uh, that they produce that, um, maybe then, again, it would be a good idea to go through the legal office, even to just write a reprimand um, thing. Um, I, that's why I say, if you think you got very sensitive or data on a very sensitive work, then it's, it's probably better to make sure with the legal office that you're actually applying, you know, a license in a way which is, you know, tribunal foolproof and everything. Um, which in theory these are, and the international one was actually rewritten so it could be applied to most possible countries in, and, you know, in a tribunal hearing. Um, but I guess the first step will be that. In, in my experience, in most cases, even if someone actually misused the data, and we did have case of data we redistributed and was misused because the people ignored the license. Um, and we've been informed by the data creator, it, it, it's just a matter of telling them and, you know, and, um, you know, the person on the other side will make sure that, you know, um, to, will try to rectify whatever they've done kind of thing. But uh, the idea is that if you don't attach a license, or even if you're unsure that this license will only a tribunal, not having a license at all, um, you know, won't really help the user to do what you want them to do. This is a list, you know, statement, if you want, um, um, of what you want. Uh, to do with the data. Obviously it can be ignored and, and that's also the thing is like where do you put your license? You have to make it clearly visible. Um, if you have a DOI you want to make sure that whatever that DOI result to as information on the license and um, you know it, it, generally speaking when you make that available and clearly visible and understandable which is one of the reasons why we follow what I think is also the ARDC um, suggestion to use the Creative Commons, because a great advantage of this is that you're not going, oh my God, I'm reading this thing. If I'm reading the, <laughs> the Apache license, I go, oh, I'm not quite sure what this means and if I'm actually doing the right thing, and then I might dismiss it. Um, so yeah, the clearer you are, um, the better it is, but if you're gonna hold in a tribunal, I really don't know. Does that answer? Yes, that's great. Thanks. Okay, so how do we apply a license? Um, so I put an example of what we do with our data. So pretty much is usually fairly easy. Maybe the biggest thing is how to get your license to travel together with your data or your code. Anyway, uh, when we publish a data set with NCI, what we do, we create a license.txt file that we put next to the, in the file system, in the main data set directory, together with a readme file, which is also another occasion to add extra information on how you interpret and what you want and if you want to be contacted and all things like that. And um, what we do basically, we write on, you, you know, an online link to the license or although we actually do have written down here, I just put the start of the legal code in this file with all the, the entire legal code there. It's still good to put the URL so they can go there and, and answer a question or doubts that they have, find all the other material. We define a licensor. So a licensor in theory should be the copyright owner. We just said before that the center of excellence doesn't really um, own the data in a way, but I guess in this case, because there's both a link to the author and both a link to the institution, is kind of acting on behalf or, or the copyright owner. Um, you can put the author name and email, um, 
what's the licensed material and you can put there your data set title, the vision. I guess at that stage, I actually pop in an old one. We didn't have a DOI, might be a good idea, also to put a DOI if you have one. And, uh, and finally, here is just, you know, the, the normal uh, name of the license, how it's known, and, and all the legal text. Okay, this will be available also on threads. Threads, for the one of you who don't know, is where you actually download the data. Um, and also that we apply this license is available in any metadata record. So in, if you go on the NCI data catalog, um, you should be able to find the reference. It's not quite like that, and CI is working on that, um, to the exact license uh, um, we are applying. Um, and we do the same for the records. We publish normally the same metadata record in Research Data Australia. So even there, we, we do write clearly what license we apply, and there's again a, a link to the license. What we also do is that um, um, NCI applies this convention to anything that get published um, for global attributes in NetCDF files. So what we do um, obviously doesn't apply if we publish ASCII file, um, but we do have a license attribute um, in each file we produce. Um, so even if someone forget where they got the data from and everything, a part that is written as well in other global attributes, we still have a clear um, link to the license. Okay, so it depends so a little bit how you, so my suggestion is to make clear, to, to think uh, what might happen if you don't publish, we ask you publish somewhere else, you know, just make sure that the license is visible, make sure that if someone was going to detach the file from the website with, from the, with the loading, they will still have uh, an indication of what the license is somewhere. Um, right, when we um, publish in the software, as I say, the license is both available in the code repository, we normally use GitHub, so I don't know if you look at one of our tool, there's, there should be a license stuff txt file or something like that and then they are included in the actual file and i'm just showing an example how to include that so that's the start of the python code in commented of course and it says here yeah, the copyright blah 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 from the center of extreme which is not quite we know it's not quite it's more like an institution on behalf um, the over uh, name and email and then you have this little code which say this little blurb which you say this is licensed under the Apache license, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, so it's fairly important whatever license you choose uh, to be clear on who is the owner, which is not necessarily as we saw the offer, um, or if you want the offer of their own institution, and um, who is the creator and the title of the work. Um, because that's the minimum requirement uh, for then actually citing the data, you know, to create a citation. And in fact, the, the best thing would be if you generate that citation as you normally uh, happens with journals and papers in which you can go there and download the citation, do stuff like that. Um, so you make sure that um, everything gets cited the way you want. Um, I actually didn't put here an example of the citation. I was going to do just a separate uh, wiki page, I guess. So um, to give you an example, what we normally put is, will be, um, I just done a region data set for Stefan Contractor. So like we will put Stefan Contractor 2019, uh, region data set blah blah version 1.0 and then there would be something like NCI data collection because that's where it's actually published and followed by the DI um, and that for me is sufficient because then from the DI you get all the other information including the license and then what normally happens is that uh, usually uh, the person who is publishing wants also uh, is that a paper gets cited. So in that case, we just add the paper and we keep the two citations together. 
Um, and I think that's pretty much all. As I say, we, here are a few links if you want to look on how intellectual property and copyrights is defined by your institution. Um, yeah, they usually have, it's usually their research office who uh, deals with these kind of things. Has anyone got any other question? I have a question. Um, does one of these licenses expire after a certain time? Um, no, um, but I was actually thinking that um, um, in my experience going around and searching for data, sometimes people update the license in terms of use. So it doesn't expire unless you do that, but you can always update your license in terms of use. So if you think that yeah. you know, oh, that's not a way I want you to do it, that's something that you can um, change. Uh, it will I was, Sorry? I was thinking because the Center for Climate System Science doesn't exist anymore. So there might be some conflict, right? Yeah, but I think in this case, as I say, the licensor is just acting on behalf of the institution. And that's something that I was going to review if we're going to put that. Uh, up to now, we kind of have to put that because the system with which we were um, also, it, it's kind of like if someone's got uh, a complaint of a question and I just put your name and this bear your email there and then you moved around, these people won't find you. Um, and I think it's kind of sometimes easier, even if the center of excellence is finished, say to, to still, um, you know, uh, find the contact for that rather than for the single person. And if I instead give as a contact, uh, you know, uh, Uni Melbourne, UNSW, which are huge institution, um, then, you know, uh, you you know, the random user who doesn't know you and trying to answer, you know, trying to contact you might still get lost. Well, I think until at least the Climate Extreme Center exists, uh, um, you're better off. You kind of have to think that, yeah, I didn't worry about eternity, but then often, you know, the most action around the data set or even a paper happens in the first few years and then, you know, um, kind of wanes down. And also in a way, if you publish in the NCI, NCI at least will be around still and they will know what happened to the climate extreme or anything else of oh, that's, you know, the old. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, great, thanks. It's a bit of a match in trying also to keep, I'm kind of at to give a little bit of visibility to the center of excellence as well when we publish stuff and it's sometimes a little bit tricky um, because of our particular situation of being spread across different institutions and using other organization services as well. Okay, if everybody is happy, should just uh, sorry. Uh, uh, there you go. Uh, okay. Uh, so, if we change from one license uh, type, I don't know, from the MIT to the Apache one, is it retrospective in the sense that once we switch, all the previous code or whatever we use will switch? Um, I mean, will people repeat that? Well. Do people respect that or how does that work kind of thing? Um, I don't know if you... Look, um, I think most people would, but um, the thing is that um, they might not know. Um, okay. So, right? Yeah, and, I was just coming for that. Uh, generally, software licenses have a specific section saying they're not revocable, which yeah. means stuff you've released in the past stays with that same license it had in the past. Um, yeah. You can add new things in the future under a new license 
and then that new version will be under the, the new license, but the stuff in the past stays with the license from the past. Yeah. Okay. So I was going to say that it depends when you obtain the, the software and the code. So it, as Scott said, and that's absolutely for any license, right? Because in that moment you're granting these rights and you can't take them back. All you can do is say from now on, we're not granting this anymore. And sometimes you see things like that. We do see lots of software and services which start at open source and then they become commercial, right? It doesn't mean like uh, um, that, you know, whatever you obtained before when they were free is not anymore usable. It is usable, but if you wanna um, get the updates and everything, um, you notice that when you want to update a software and they have updated terms and conditions, that's a moment in which they get you to upset that. Mm. Um, so the updated version, yeah, that will go under the new license. But if you're happy to keep your old um, non-updated version or whatever, um, then so for data, which is a lot more static, unless the a creator goes back to correct something and at the same time changing license, um, the other person um, still can use it under the license they obtain it from. Okay. I just want to say that, um, to add that, you know, We've been applying licensing in a certain way. Um, we might actually change when we have more time to look into things. I don't uh, feel that you do have to use the Creative Commons or that you know uh, you do have to put there the center of excellence and you wanna put your own institution, it's okay. You know, you wanna put yourself, it's okay. Um, you know, we, we hope and normally people have no idea so we had to have like a kind of um, um, baseline you know um, just put this a touch if you want to uh, go more deep and look into different option and discuss different option we obviously um, happy to help you and happy to apply different stuff uh, just a um, reminder that usually is a re uh, requirement from the ARC that you know your research products are open access and that applies as well to data set. So um, you can apply licenses um, which are not open access, but you need to have a good reason to do that. Now, a really good reason to do that is like, remember the share alike. And if you're using some data which has a more restrictive and maybe not open access, or you know that you bought from somewhere, then their own license might restrict what you can do uh, with your the right product. Um, so that's a thing that you should be aware when you choose, you know, any input data or what potential consequences that can have. Okay, if there's no any more questions. Um, just let you go and thanks for coming and i think next week scott will cover uh plotting in python i don't know scott if you want to add a little bit more of what you're going to do or oh, that's right there is plotting bits maps and stuff okay great okay um thanks again for coming and see you soon thanks Paolo. thank you See you, thank, thank you. Thank you. See you later.